Well, welcome back to another video. Today we are, by me saying we, I mean they, <laughs> are changing out concaves from wheat to beans. I already have the one done, now we're doing the other one. Isn't that right? That's right. These, are, show, the, show them what these are the guys that are changing them. I'm watching, <laughs> learning. So you got to turn that in order to get it just right, right? That's the rotor. Don't stab your mouth with that I toothpick. Was, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I get pretty aggressive with it. <laughs> your brother did that one time. Did he? Yeah. Did he start bleeding too? We were at a restaurant and he was talking and all of a sudden the toothpick Wedged straight up and down inside his. <laughs> <laughs> that probably hurt. Oh, I got it. Two down, one to go. All right. So that's the wheat concaves out. Here's what the rotor looks like inside the. Oh. <laughs> Bloopers. <Yeah. laughs> that will be a good one because I got it on camera. I thought the step was over here more. Good save. All right, so here it is. And then explain what that does. That's the rotation that the rotor makes. Oh. And the grain comes in from the left side or the front. And those thrashing elements rub up again to speed. The grain rubs between them and these concaves that we take in now. That's what thrashes the grain. By them, he means these. Yeah. And then it uh, falls into those augers that are turning. Down here. there. And then it comes in the back and goes, goes through those that way, through the sieves, which are The straw and chaff goes out these. the top, or stays on top and goes out the back. There's air blowing across that. And then the grain falls through and down in the bottom and up the clean grain elevator. Into the hopper. Simple. All right, now the bean concaves. So you pin that in first, and then that folds up there, and then that bolts to each of these concaves, and then we got to adjust it. So this is this is how you adjust your concave clearance. Oh, okay. So either clearance. tightening or loosening it. Yeah. So and that's gotta... from the inside though, don't you? Yep. So from inside the cab, this is the motor that controls it. Right. And it lifts on these rods to lift these concaves closer to the rotor. So we got to go through a procedure of leveling this and setting our clearance. So Bo and I even got the air bars put on last week. So they're all ready to go. Both headers. All right, so yesterday we tried the beans. They were a little wet yet. I think they read 13.7 on the tester. So today, it's Wednesday, we're gonna try again. It's been sunny all morning and it's one o'clock now. So it's dry and ready to go. I'm gonna grease these axles on my cart here and then head out to the field. These things take a lot of grease. I'll just set this thing on a high setting and wait till it comes out. That was a hundred pumps. Now I'll go do the other side. Well, we're on day number one of soybean harvest. When we started, the moisture was at a 13.1 and we've got a pretty uh, strong wind this afternoon, evening, so they dried down fairly quick to 12.9. That was an hour ago. So our, uh, our truck drivers are having to haul to our elevator, which is about a half hour away, because we're not dumping them into our bins back home at the farm, because uh, we won't have enough room for our corn otherwise this fall. Going 21 and a half miles an hour. Gotta get them. It's so dusty. 
see, I can hardly see. I was going so fast, my auto steer kicked out. The field we're doing right now is a quarter, and I think we have probably, if I had to guess, probably 40 acres left. Uh, then we'll be moving over to another field just down the road. Elevator closes at 8 o'clock, so we won't be able to go much longer after 8. We'll probably just fill up both the trucks and the cart. That way the two trucks will take off. Actually, three trucks will take off in the morning. It's a little after 6 and just was told that the moisture has dropped down to 12.1. So this wind is really drying this stuff out quick. to the next field here we're gonna get this one going hopefully get it some of it taken off here we've got a couple passes left on this field that we moved to and then I think we're gonna call it a night because uh, all the trucks are full and ready for the morning. So we will catch you tomorrow. Day number two of bean harvest. Had a little bit of uh, sprinkles this morning, but we ended up being able to combine through that. Beans are dry enough and it was just a little bit of rain. It won't, wouldn't do anything. Wouldn't even go past their coats. So I'm sitting up here on the grain cart waiting for my uh, one of my truck drivers to get back. Cart is full, plump full, well, almost plump full. Wouldn't be able to get another combine hopper in here. Almost to the top. Had a little bit of room in the back and a little bit right here, but combine's over there waiting. He's coming in hot. Dust is just rolling. make her to the end. You had to back out and start going the other way so that I could dump them. Well, it's day number three, I believe. And we started on this field out here. Thought it would be ready to go, but the moisture is reading anywhere between 14 to 16 percent. So we ended up stopping and thinking maybe we'll try again this afternoon, let them dry down a little bit more, but we just checked the radar and there's rain coming around one, two o'clock. So I think the plan is to hold off until Monday. Unless things change, then, then we'll start going again. But right now, Bo is just blowing off these headers here and uh, getting these leaves off the top. Whoa, whoa! Friday dust. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like a little foreign to me. I don't know what the 
heck all these monitors and buttons and levers and switches and knobs do. So this ditch right here, this is that one that we showed on the video. That the one that Grandpa dug too deep back in the 70s or the 80s. The one that we showed last week. Yep. So that's this one right here. And I, I, we filled it in and I recut it. So that's that's filled in and done now. And then I went in and put all these in. So I put these mains in, put them to grade. Like this one here, I click on that. This is the profile of that ditch I put in. So that's that's that ditch right here. So what's This is the, that profile. So I what, mean, there's like seven feet of fall. But as soon as you come off, about right here, I can and click that. Well, anyway, from about here, it's where it flattens out right here. And then it just gets really flat, as you can tell. And then it dumps into the ditch that we cleaned out and redid. There's like seven feet of fall if I back this out all the way. Okay, so there you're at like 64 and down here is 56. So there's eight feet of difference from the bottom of this ditch to the top of this ditch. And I didn't even go all the way to the road, but there's eight feet of difference. But the only problem is, is right down in here. So this whole area right here it's kind of flatter before it gets into the creek, obviously, or into the, the waterway. So it comes like crazy, and then it just flattens way out. And then this is where all the little potholes are and stuff like that, as you can see. So anyway, we're doing three passes wide here. I survey it, and then I cut it back, and then I do a cut on each side. And then I come back, and I tilt the machine a little bit, and then I do my back slopes. I don't usually have to have a very deep ditch because there's so much fall here. So one pass for a back slope is sufficient. The tractor that we have on here is 360 horse. It's a 310 turned up. So how far does this uh, ditcher throw the dirt? Well, if it's at full RPM, it'll throw it 150 feet. It'll go left side or right side. Yeah, the, it switches so to get it to roll. I can switch it if the wind is in the wrong direction or I've got a ditch or something. I can switch it, which is really nice. So we got finished sloping that one out. Yep. So now we're going to survey. You want to explain how that is done? Oh, well, we find our ditch here. Figure out which one we want to do. You were right there. This is us. See, this is the ditch we just cut, right here. See, there, there, them are the high spots that we took out there and there. There's so much fall here, but there's little pockets up here that are holding water back. It's crazy. The red spots are depressions, meaning holes or divots. How do you know where you're at for to start a ditch? Well, this little green dot here with the arrow, with the V, it's, that's me. That's us. And then, then, so this is where we're at right here, and you want to start this ditch right here? Yep. So we're going to take this here, and we're going to survey it all the way back up, up into the creek here. And we got to make sure the machine is lifted all the way up, so that we got the same point of reference on everything. We're going to the outlet downstream, so now it's ready to go. So now as we drive, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take elevation the GPS will take elevation and uh, it'll draw us a map of the topography of the ground. Okay, that's good enough. So here's the profile of the ditch. So we're uh, probably to the bottom of the ditch here. If we kept going, it'd be 54,054 feet. And on the top, roughly 1,062. So there's eight feet to fall from the top on this short little ditch right here. There's eight feet of fall from here to here already. Um, but we have a few pockets where water's gonna sit. And so we're gonna clean that up so that we hit stop survey and there's our our profile of our ditch it only says it wants us to take out 24 yards 
but since our ditch isn't defined or we don't have a defined ditch here, it's just natural lay of the land, uh, we're going to put a, a three, uh, roughly a 3.1 inch uh, ditch below grade. So now we're going to move 125 yards and that's just one pass. So basically that little black arrow right there, that's the cutting edge of the, the blade. So we're going to turn our automatic height control on. So now it's going to be all automated. So then we turn on the PTO and then we turn on the power for the auto. Uh, so we got hydraulics, the constant hydraulics for your up and down and tilt. That's right here. So I'm going to turn the automatic level on so that it'll keep the blade level. No matter what, if I'm turning or whatever, going up and down, it'll keep that blade level for a nice flat bottom. And then I'm going to turn on both augers. Also, we need to put the, the automatic height that's on. So when I drive ahead now, it'll just automatically go down to this grade. Shut the gate. The wind's out of the west. So right here, that's our cut. That's that's what we're taking right now. The green, that's the material, and then that's the bottom of our our blade right now. Okay, so this tractor has got a CVT, uh, which is an infinite, uh, kind of an infinity type of transmission, infinite transmission. So every this little dial right here, I'm in F1, and then there's an F2. But I'm in F1 and then I can, if the tractor pulls down really hard, I just click it down, just little clicks. And I can get down all the way to a, less than a mile an hour. Let's see? And then if Point it, four five there for a second. So I can speed up now and I just, every click is, a, is like two points or two tenths of a mile an hour. Or actually it's a tenth of a mile. Every click is one tenth of a mile an hour. I can split my speed by a tenth of a mile an hour just if she's pulling hard and I get some really hard stuff or it's a really uh, deep cut, I can slow it way down so it doesn't kill the tractor. Otherwise with a power shift transmission you're limited to just that amount of range. So with a machine like this you need, you need this transmission basically.